Today we're going to talk about color and what it means in the art world. So when we think of color, we are automatically familiar with it. It seems like a strange question to ask, what is color? We can distinguish between colors such as red versus blue, but how do we associate color with art? Is it simply whether or not the color makes it beautiful or not? There's actually more to it than just that. Color is the basis for emotion and a way to evoke a feeling or a mood. For example, if you wanted to represent an emotion of passion or anger, would you use the color yellow or even white? Probably not. You would most likely want to use red tones. The reason is that the certain colors mean different things. This also depends heavily on one's own culture and how those colors are perceived. So there are also colors that work well with one another, more so than others. This is crucial in the, in the art world, and that's why planning out your color scheme is very important before going in with color, whether it is a drawing, a painting, or even a sculpture. It also keeps us from allowing our drawing to look like a rainbow exploded on our composition. This can often be distracting to the viewer and take away from what the true intention is of the piece. So let's start from the beginning. Introduction to color theory. Your primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, are the head honchos. Think of them as kings that rule over the color wheel kingdom. These colors are often um, are from which all other colors can be blended. Next, we have secondary colors. These colors, which are orange, green, and purple, are created by mixing two primary colors together. Next, we have tertiary colors, also known as intermediate colors. These colors are created by mixing a primary color with a secondary color. Examples of this are red-orange and blue-green, to name a few. So now that we know the color categories on the color wheel, we need to think about color harmonies. So which colors work well with one another? First thing is that we need to do is look again at the order of the color wheel, as seen here. What colors align or neighbor one another? Ever heard of Roy G. Biff? That is the order of colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. The first set of color schemes that we are going to talk about are complementary colors. These pairs of colors are opposite of one another and across from the color wheel. They include red and green, blue and orange, and yellow and purple. I like to relate my color schemes with recognizable items in order to help me remember. So for example, one color, uh, color scheme, the red and green, I relate to the colors of Christmas. Another, blue and orange, I relate to the Chicago Bears since I'm a Chicago native. See if you can come up with common relations between the color schemes to help you remember them. Next, we have analogous color schemes. These colors are neighboring colors on the color wheel. Think of warm colors versus cool colors. Red, orange, and yellow, all neighboring colors create a warm color scheme. And the same for cool colors, green, blue, and purple, all neighboring. As discussed before in our value unit, we can also create a color scheme based off of the tints and shades of the color by adding white and or black. This is called a monochromatic color scheme and just so happens to be my favorite of all color schemes. So monochromatic color schemes involve a variety of tint and shade variations of a particular hue. Now that we know a little bit about the use of color in a work of art, let's focus on an artist that uses color harmonies to evoke emotion and expression within his art. I'd like to introduce you to Mark Rothko. Rothko is a Russian painter that focused on abstract and color field paintings. Similar to artist Jackson Pollock, Mark Rothko started experimenting with a new style of work where he became extremely interested in form and color versus a specific subject or object. In 1949, he introduced a compositional format that he continued throughout his career. Uh, a concentration on a picture space that revolved around color, surface, scale, and proportion. The surface of his canvases are rough, uh, which gives the illusion of texture. We then have color and how it plays a role on emotion. Remember how we talked about earlier on how specific colors represent specific emotions? Well, we then have scale. These paintings were painted on a larger scale to reference dominance, as seen here in this image. Notice it's much larger than the person viewing it. 
So imagine standing next to a painting larger than you and that was even painted red, kind of intimidating or even aggressive feeling. And then lastly, there's proportion. Each shape has been carefully aligned in proportion to the other. If one is larger, then that would be the dominant color or the dominant shape. So how can we create a piece that is similar to Rothko's thought process? We need to create a composition based off of color by using specific color harmonies to create emotion while concentrating not on specific objects, but shapes and designs. First, think about what color harmonies inspire you. What colors are you drawn to? Think about what those colors mean and the emotion that they might represent. Here's some more examples of Mark Rothko's paintings to help you get started. So once you've decided on your color harmonies, sketch out at least five different compositions using aligned proportions and place the colors that you are wanting to represent in each of your shapes provided. Then, narrow down your design to one that stands out the most. On a piece of graph paper, draw out your design as large scaled as a large scaled piece. Very carefully and lightly go in with pencil and mark what colors you will be using in the spaces provided. If you are using blue, each square will need to be represented in a different tone and shade of that color. This will not only create a composition based on color, scale, and proportion, but texture and value as well. If you've enjoyed my tutorial, please subscribe to my page to get updates on upcoming videos.